it's 2023. Happy New Year. I'm Jenny Russell. Welcome to Her Health and Happiness right here on UK Health Radio, your only real feel good radio station now available on Alexa. How you doing? I hope, like me, you to remember that you are blessed and highly favoured, a magnet for miracles, the solution to someone's problem and the answer to somebody's prayer. And I hope today this show will be the answer to the prayer you've been wanting, the goal you set for this year. Her Health and Happiness is a show dedicated to all aspects of feminine, intimate health and the whole person. And today, I want to just talk about where what we value and where we place our time, our energy and our focus. But I also want to make a plea to the government. With the rise in the cost of living and the way in which money is being allocated... It definitely is a mistake to not make sure there is enough money available to ensure that the safe houses for for the sufferers of domestic violence are not closed down. That's a big story, and that really does need looking at. We're dedicating a certain amount of money, but dedicate more. So what did you do to see the new year in? How did you celebrate in 2023? And how did you say goodbye to 2022? And what are you saying goodbye to in 2022? And what are you bringing in to 2023? Because I think the most important thing to bring into 2023 is a new focus, a new alignment, a new shift in our thoughts, how we see things, how we prioritize things and what we decide to do. Because here's the thing, we all have the same 24 hours in our day. We all have the same time. No one has more time than others. We all have the same time. But many people say, I don't have time. Really, it's about I haven't prioritized my time in such a way that the things that are the most valuable, the things that are actually the most important, which really needs to be our health, is given that centre stage that it should have because everything comes off and out of and through your health and vitality. If you don't have the health, then everything else you're striving for, everything that you want, it won't happen if you can't do it. So therefore, in order for you to be able to do it, your health has to be, no, it doesn't have to be, it should be your priority. So I'm really hoping that in this new season, in January, not, I, I did an, an Instagram. You look at my Instagram, at Pelvic Secrets, and I said, don't take out a gym membership if you want to get yourself really healthy. Health starts on the inside. It starts inside the head. The thoughts, the breath, the hydration, they're all in the head. We take in whatever we eat or drink, hydrating foods, drink, water, goes in through the mouth, it's in the head. Our breath starts, whether we uh, nose breathers or mouth breathers, We'll talk about that in a moment. It's in the head. But our thoughts, all of those things happen in the head. So we've got to start there first. And it is thoughts, breath, hydration. Isn't it funny that all three are in the head? Then it's sleep. So you need to rest your head. And then it's movement. It, it's Then it's food and it's movement. 
So most people have run to the gym to get fit, but actually everything is internal. So a lot of things happen in the head, but then they happen inside the body. So no matter what aesthetics you're looking for, no matter how pretty you want your body to look, it's the vitality of your organs that will dictate everything else. Sickness doesn't happen on a muscular level. It happens on an organ level. And once we start to focus on the vitality of the inside, the vitality, the vibrancy, the aesthetics, the posture, the performance, the movement ability, all of that will just come out. It just comes out. A beautiful looking car that you see fly past you is able to fly past you because what you can't see allows it to move. So that the engine makes it move. So our organs are our engines. We've got to start looking after our bodies and treating our bodies in exactly the same way we would look after a high-performance car. Or put it this way, <laughs> a lot of people buying cars on finance, so trust me when I tell you, they're looking after that car. So we have to start doing the same thing with our bodies. And that is why I, I named the show Her Health and Happiness, because I have a focus on feminine, intimate health, female, intimate health, and the whole person. Now, I hope you enjoyed the last two weeks with Dr. Loretta. And as I said, the difference between myself and a medical professional is that I my programs are time-centered. So I have the time. This is why the investment is different. I have the time. I have the time to deep dive to find out what areas... In, within the six principles are the ones that are stopping you from realizing the goals or dreams that you've set for yourself and once I'm able to take a deep dive in and show you then that makes a significant difference now next week I'll be sharing some of the testimonies from the 60 day challenge because it finishes this Sunday and then the next one is aligned to start on the 1st of February So we started the last month of last year with a major detox. We did a water, juice, smoothie detox. So we we wanted to flush out the detoxification system, then we cleanse the blood, then we energize the blood. We've started this year with another detox, not as, as intense, but we're just allowing the body just to rest. We're taking away some of the heavy duty things that we've been eating over the festive season we're taking away the sugars and the things that we've overloaded ourselves with over the festive season we're removing the alcohol and the toxins so the body gets an opportunity in this last seven days of the 60 day challenge to actually just rest the organs get a chance to rest but what was interesting is I asked everyone to come on and to tell me three of their goals they have for they'd like to achieve for this year whether it be discipline goals, you know, stru- uh, you know, tangible goals or just personal goals. And I could look at the six principles of total health, seven, they added the seventh, thoughts, breath, hydration, sleep, food, movement and social interaction. And I could tell them which ones of those principles were blocking their ability to be able to effectively realise their dreams. So, for example... If you have, if you're struggling with something like fibromyalgia, which some of the ladies on this challenge were, then adrenal fatigue is is definitely your adrenals are absolutely trashed. So revitalizing the adrenals is a number one thing, which means that there are three of the principles of female and three are male. So the female principles are sleep, hydration and nutrition. The three male are thoughts, breath and movement. So if you have adrenal fatigue, then movement, you might think, I want to get my body moving. But how do you get your body moving? Well, it needs to restore and repair and rebuild and refresh, which means it needs hydrating. It means if your adrenals are trash, it means nutrition is has definitely got to be a factor for you, as well as hydration. But also, you need to get adequate rest at the right time. 
Our bodies follow the circadian rhythms of the sun. So between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., it physically repairs itself. And between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., psychogenic repair. But also understanding the circadian clock and understanding which parts of the body at which times are flushing and clearing. Now, even in terms of detoxification health, which is what this body needs to do, the colon refreshes itself between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. So when you wake up in the morning and have a movement, it's also a sign that the colon is working really well. So it's understanding those little things there that's going to actually be able to help you to revitalize. Now, of course, thoughts are different. With fibromyalgia, it's usually linked to a severe sense of injustice. And the thoughts around that are quite negative. But you need to get those bits there first. And then as you're starting to focus on your thoughts and your breath, life force energy, they align together. So I'd go breath with with the thoughts as opposed to thoughts and then breath. So breath with the thoughts. So have an affirmation, then follow it through with the breath. But if the body is in fight flight and the adrenals are trashed, You've got high levels of cortisol. In fact, they can be so high they actually drop and they become quite dangerous. That then is going to affect your sex hormones as well. Then you've got this whole cycle going on. So you've got to get digestive health, right? So nutrition is a crucial one. But in terms to get nutritional health, right, you've got to find out what things impact nutrition. And that comes right back into your pelvis. And you start to understand the sphincters. So there's, there's, it's, it's quite a deep thing. But I suppose... Once you understand that, you understand why it's time intensive, what we offer, and we're able to coach the person that presents with the condition, because it's the coaching that takes time. Learning how to correct posture, doing those movements are great, but you've got to coach a person. And if a person has negative thinking, poor breath, poor digestion, poor transit times, poor sleep quality, then food, then sorry, movement, exercise really is of little consequence because ex- sleep is an exercise in itself as is exercising the discipline to take in water so once we start to understand those things we understand that not all exercise is created equally and you don't run to the gym to get a membership in january to get yourself fit you kind of need to know what it is you need to be fit for and which parts of you are not fit because Health is a part of the fitness journey. Fitness, sorry. Fitness is a part of the health journey. But health is not necessarily a part of the fitness journey. And the gyms are there to get you fit. Doesn't mean they're there to get you well. Because this part that I've just explained doesn't come within the package. The coaches don't have that. They're not called coaches. They don't have that. So because they don't have that information, they don't make it available. And because we are outside in people, many people want to... Ignore the information because it you can't see it. But you need to sense it and feel it first. And then you will see the results after. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. My question is, is it not possible for us to, or for the energy companies, to have a level of compassion for certain businesses? I mean, is it so much about what we what we get from other people to their detriment that we really don't care? Because if a lot of these domestic violence companies are looking to shut down because the rising cost of fuel means they can't afford to keep the places warm or heated during this winter crisis then we've got problems we've got real problems when when it comes to companies when it comes to money over life and that is the reason why so many people are sick because the thing that people are chasing is like that you know we're all slaves in that regard to finance if that's all we do is chase it We're chasing finance, but as I said, Steve Jobs, there's so many people that will tell you, I would give away everything if I could have another minute on earth. Because actually, the thing I should be chasing is peace. The thing I should be chasing is optimising my health. The thing I should be valuing the most 
is my health. But we just assume we will wake up and get up, jump out of bed and get on with it. The thing about even something like adrenal fatigue is when the body wants to stop you, it will stop you. Now, there's the American footballer yesterday, and I'm really praying by God's grace that he is fine, who had the chest challenge. I would want to know if he had the jab. I would. I went there. I would want to know. Because there are lots of statistics out there that are showing that the it has an adverse effect on younger men. Yeah, the younger, it has a much more adverse effect on younger men. But that stuff is being overlooked because, you know... It was said that if 700,000 people lose their lives to save one, it's good. But that's, that makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. Because we don't need to be in that position. We don't need to take it to that level. But, you know, when you're watching athletes, athletes just dropping down on the pitch, you have to ask yourself a question. These are highly... Because you can say it's the contact. But that contact happens a million times over. It's more than the contact. And again... It's about the engine. It's what we cannot see. There are a lot more doctors speaking up now and telling you the difference between a heart attack and a cardiac arrest. I watched an amazing video from a top doctor on the difference between a heart attack and a cardiac arrest. And they're wondering why so many more cardiac arrests are suddenly showing up post-pandemic. Now, in the old days, the worry was like bodybuilders, you know, they took steroids, the ones that took steroids, not all of them take steroids. And of course, then, you know, that's to actually make the muscles grow, to inflame the muscles, so to speak. So they would have more muscular density, but the heart's a muscle as well. So you're going to, you're going to, that, the danger of that, if you ever, ever went to see the Body Works exhibition and actually saw the cadavers and you saw the hearts from people that took steroids, they were amazing. Then you obviously saw the lungs from people that smoked. They were <laughs> scary. But it was scary also to see the size of the heart in comparison to the size of, an, of a natural heart and what can happen. Inflammation around a joint, around, you know, even within the chambers of the heart means that if they inflame, they, they become narrow. You know, when we've got calcification, when we get buildup of cholesterol, when we get buildup of pluck, that becomes a problem. Now, cholesterol is not your enemy. Cholesterol comes in to try and fight whatever's inside of the artery that's blocking it up from the junk masquerading as foods, the, the fats, the plaques. So cholesterol is not the enemy. Our body produces 75% of the cholesterol within us. So there's no way the body produces something that's going to kill us. So we have to start to ask questions. We have to start to understand how our bodies work. Because if we understand how our bodies work, we can actually put our bodies into the best positions possible so that we can have the life that we want to enjoy. Now, you know me already, sassy, sexy, 60. It's, that's my mantra. That's my statement. That's where I want to take everyone. That journey of living a fabulous life after 50 Straight into sassy, sexy 60, moving into serene, you know, I mean, successful 70s. I mean, you know, it's got to be that. And what's happened now is we've got the onset of women like Davina McCall and, and Lorraine Kelly and those people that I've grown up with who are either my age or slightly younger or slightly older. But they're all beginning to look good. So now it's suddenly like, oh my gosh, you know, mature women are looking good. They've still got their, and I'm talking about ones who have kept their face natural, not ones who have blown them up and put Botox in because that stuff will come back to bite them as well. But they're looking, they're looking well. The Venus face is a bit drawn for my liking. It's a bit, but, but again, everyone is different, but she looks well. What is well in inverted commas? But we're not, we don't have poor posture. They're not walking around breathless, can't do anything, you know. Davina does lots of ultra challenges. Yesterday on the news, there was a lady, 55. She's a world record holder for, like, running, is it 800 uh, marathons and stuff in her age group. She's a world record holder. And she just started running a few years ago because she was at school with her kids, watching them really cold and thought, you know what, I'm going to start running, excuse me. I'm going to start running. And she said, 
that when she first started the races, she was last. There was a lady, the man on the news last night said there was a lady who was pregnant that was faster than her. Now she's a record holder. You know, lean body, 55. Now, I'm not telling everyone to go out and run because a lot of the doctors of the NHS are saying, we need to look after ourselves and we need to do things. Please don't start running, especially if you're going to start running on the pavement. It's up to seven times your body weight that goes through your joints every time you strike the pavement. It's an average of 200 strikes per minute. You've got to think of the load that's going through the joints. The more overweight you are, the more that load is going through the joints. So you, as you're trying to use a working out exercise, which increases the stress, it's a stressor anyway, so it increases the cortisol. But then, of course, you've got more stress. You're going to have even more if you're carrying more load than the body wants then you've got seven times that going through a pavement. It doesn't give. The pavements don't give. People don't want to run in the woods because either it's the dogs or it's too muddy. But that, at least it gives. And what it does, because the ground is uneven, then at least it, it recruits what we call the tilting reflexes to help you stay upright and, and navigate that ground. That is so much better for you. And because you have to do that, and because it is softer, especially after it's been raining like now, what happens is... Yeah, you have to drive out. So now you're recruiting more of your fast twitch muscle fibers. Now you're recruiting more fibers in the belly of the muscle, not trashing the joints. And that's why, you know, a run in the woods, a three mile run in the woods could be like the equivalent of a four mile run on the road. But the minute you come out of the woods, especially when you've gone into a, a muddy surface and you hit a, a stretch of concrete, it's like you're like a gazelle. You kind of glide over it. You feel like someone's pushing you when you're running and you've got this accelerated speed. It's amazing. But you have to experience that. And again, if you are going to do running, join a running club and learn the techniques of run, learn the gait, do whatever. But do it from a position where the posture isn't compromised. So what we should always do is look to improve our posture first and then add the movements after because posture it's a position from where all movement begins and ends. And if you've got good posture, you will have better movement ability and less likelihood for injury. So you remember, collagen starts to deplete in the body after the age of 25. If our diet isn't very good, if, if the foods that we take in lack the nutrients because a lot of the nutrients are destroyed in the minerals in the soil because the soil has been destroyed and we don't want to or we cannot or we're not in position to buy organic and we don't have the ability to grow our own vegetables, or we don't have access to an allotment, or to a farm where we can buy just one carrot and one bits and pieces. And, you know, I've got a village whole food shop around the corner to me. They do some amazing potatoes. But there are clients that walk into the shop and say the potatoes are dirty. <laughs> they grew out of the ground. Hello? <laughs> You've got a tap. Wash them. But we would rather go them in a packet when they've already been cleaned and chlorinated. So we have to understand all these little bits and pieces and that makes a big difference. So once we're able to get the right consistency and nutrition into our bodies, we, we eat foods that help to build collagen, we keep the collagen that we've got and strengthen the joints and, and, and strengthen, the, um, increase the muscle density, good proteins to give us good muscular growth. That's when we then say, right, now my body's in a good position to start to run. That's when we take up running. But... But ask yourself what you are running for. If it's just for leisure, if it's just to relax yourself, that's fine. But align it with where you are in terms of your own stress journey. You know, if you're in a really toxic relationship, if you're um, in a really stressful job, if you've got issues around lots of things you're worrying about, running is not a sport for you. Funny enough, the thing that you need to do is actually to be still and meditate possibly and do some yoga or tai chi or qigong something that tells the body it's safe because all the other things that are happening in your life even though you don't realize it all of those things are telling your body it's not safe and then if you then go and add the load of running and and you know stressing the joints and increasing the cortisol you just keep telling the body it's not safe and that's how you can start to walk down that road to adrenal fatigue because as we especially as us females as we move towards the menopause as we move into perimenopause as we move towards the menopause as our estrogen levels drop our adrenals have to take up the slack and our cortisol level goes up 
But if the adrenals are already trashed before they have to take this extra job on, then like I said, when the body wants to stop you, it will stop you. K Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Now we've got some issues to sort. And those issues are going to definitely be around um, what's happening with the NHS. And I don't really know how to describe it, but it's very, very sad that we're getting these stories of of, um, people that, as the NHS continues to struggle... The patients are being hit the hardest. And this is the reason why I'm saying to you, we really, really, really have to now look at what we can do for ourselves because the NHS wasn't, was designed to be there for those who really, really need it. And please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that those who are waiting didn't really, really need it. But, but because they have been overloaded by so many different things, because of all the red tape and the bureaucracy because, um, you know, when we went through this season of lockdown and we convinced everybody that if you weren't vaccinated, you were a danger to everybody else, we we compromised what was being offered because before those nurses had the vaccine, those same dangerous nurses and doctors were looking after people. But once people bought into the propaganda, then suddenly the person that looked after you yesterday who was safe suddenly became a danger to your life the next day. That isn't actually true. It never was true. And it's interesting because the mandatory vaccine, where you had to be vaccinated or you'd lose your job, it was it was taken away. So if it was really, really true, you'd, if you really believed that in your heart to be true, you would never overturn it. And now, all of a sudden, those same people that were safe today, dangerous tomorrow, and then, are then safe the day after. How does that work? So when we don't actually start to respect the services that that actually help to embody our ability to get well and to recover, then we really are putting ourselves in a dangerous position. If we, if the MPs at the beginning of lockdown could take an 11% pay rise on what they already get, that's called greed, and then say, but we won't take one next year, but tell you who only earns... 25%, if that, of what they earn before their 11% pay rise, that 1% is all they can give you because there's, there's a lot more of you, then something's wrong. That's what I was saying earlier on about the energy companies. You know, if you know already that you, you're you increasing those prices, because as you're increasing those prices, you're also saying that you've got these fantastic profits. So the profit is all you're interested in not the service you're providing, and all of a sudden the customer service has gone because it's called automated services, cannot speak to anybody. So customer service has gone out the window. And if you want to make money, be in a business where you have something that people need, then you can exploit that business for profit to the detriment of somebody else's livelihood that people will take their life over it and you'll destroy families and make people homeless. Because at the end of the day, the only thing you're interested in is something you can never take with you when you die. Everything you earn, you can't take with you. When you've got such an excess and it's all about the greed and about the status and about the external look and about the luxuries that won't add an ounce to your life. Then then we know that we're, in, we're focusing on the wrong thing. And this is where we've got ourselves to this point here now where that is our main focus And all of a sudden, that's causing a problem for many, many people. And many people are losing out. And then we've got struggles and problems in the NHS. And then, of course, people cannot get seen. So now, now is the time where they're finally saying to you, look after yourself. But I've been saying this for years. And we we as holistic healthcare professionals have said this for years. When we were ready to support during the lockdown... We were poo-pooed because the only solution that everyone was convinced was there was was a jab. And we weren't offering that. What we were telling you was to optimise your health. And and now you're being told to optimise your health. So now it matters. But that's fantastic. It's better late than never. 
and we are here to help. Always been here to help, always will be here to help by the grace of God. Because that's the most important thing. Because we have to be able to, to look after the temple we live in, which is our body. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We have the most amazing immune system. It takes us to m many great places. There are people out there who I know who have had near-death experiences, whose hearts have stopped and been revived again, and they're still walking around 15, 20 years later. There are anomalies all over the place. But it starts in the head, permeates out into the organs of the body, and then it comes on the outside. So if we look after the inside, the outside will look after itself. We can add to the outside, but even if we're going to the gym and we're doing this or we're going for a run and we're doing this, like I said to you, if we've got great posture, we've got better movement ability, less likelihood for injury. Then we need to have the right stuff. Now, remember, a lot of the trainers that are out there with all these cushioning soles change the pelvic angle anyway. So that makes a big difference. Whenever I do any of my workouts with my clients, it is mandatory for everybody to work out barefoot. Because we've got receptors and nerve endings and messages that come from the feet. That's our base of support. And then the pelvis is our, is our center of gravity over our base of support and our head and shoulders. The eyes, the inner ear, the jaw wants to remain level on the horizon are our limits of stability. So we need to be able to align the body. But when we start to put trainers on with big stacked heels and all different things and meant to cushion the blows... The arches are our natural shock absorbers. So many people, so many children are walking around with dropped arches. The minute the arches drop, the position of the pelvis changes. The activity of the buttocks changes. The activity of the pelvic floor changes. The stability of the spine changes. The position of the head and shoulders start to change. Can you see where I'm going? Everything changes. So everything is interlinked and we just need to understand how that works. Now I'm going to play one more track before I round the show up and finish talking once again about the 60 day optimizing your health challenge. What are you willing to invest in? What is it you want? What will happen if you don't change anything for where you are now? And who will suffer? That's the questions you have to be able to answer for yourself because really it's not about what I want to do for you. It's about what you want to do for yourself and then about how I can help you, coach you, guide you, educate you. That's what coaches like myself are meant to do. Rather than tell you, we'll ask you those questions, you answer those questions and then hopefully we can coach you in such a way that you can live life better. It's fantastic. You can align your love, your life, your passion and your leisure with your passion, your purpose and your prosperity. That's how it's supposed to be. Let's play one more track and then let's end the show with something upbeat. Ready to dive in. Now, just before I say that, today being the 4th of January for me, it's 16 years today that I lost my father. And so that's a quite a reflective day. A friend of mine lost his sister in September. He sends these beautiful Christmas cards every year. It arrived yesterday because of the postal strikes. But in there was a beautiful heart candle, like the tea light candle on the shape of a heart, and said, light the candle for his sister Jo, and for those who have gone before us. Well, it arrived for me on the 3rd. Today is the 4th, so I shall light the candle for my father and for Joe and for Malcolm, my friend who died on the 1st of October. And I found out another friend of mine has passed away. And so for all of those people that have gone before us, this track is for you. And of course, let's not forget our beautiful, beautiful Pele. Not forget Pele because he was the ultimate footballer, and of course, then there must have been someone that he was inspired by, possibly. But you know what he was able to do for Brazil, what he was able to do for poor black people in Brazil is second to none. So, Pele, rest in peace. It was beautiful to see the procession that followed the streets where they were lined 
the way people flew from all over the world to come and pay their respects. You were a remarkable footballer. What we see today, the skills we see from our Messi's and Ronaldo's and Mbappe, all of those amazing players, all those skills. There's a great video on YouTube. You must look for it or even on TikTok. And it just says Pele did it first. It's absolutely fantastic to watch. That natural skill and natural agility was absolutely amazing. And again, this is the man with great posture, great stance, great presence, understated, because sometimes you don't need to be so loud. You don't need to be so in your face. And a lot of social media today is really putting everything in our face. But the message he left, the legacy he left, it will be there forever. And it's great that the um, head of the, um, I think it's the highest guy in, in, the, in football, wants to try and have a stadium in every country, in every part of the globe that actually remembers the name Pele. And I think that is a testament to a, a magnificent, magnificent player. So Pele, rest in eternal peace. Now, we are in the land of the living. I, I love one of the scriptures, which is in Psalm twenty-seven, thirteen, And it says, I would have given up hope if I had not believed that I would see the beauty of the Lord in the land of the living. So we are indeed in the land of the living and we have an opportunity to live life better. We can align our love, our lifestyle and our leisure with our passion, our purpose and our prosperity. I call it the LP of life. And it's like, you know, it's like a 12 inch. <laughs> you don't want to play a 45 for your LP of life. You won't play a 12 inch. You want one that goes on and on. But what's the quality of your life? If you look at what you're doing in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your leisure and in terms of your love. Where is the balance? Is there a balance there? Many times we look for love outside of ourselves, but first of all, it's to love of self first. And if we love ourselves first, even on an airplane, if it's crashing, you put the oxygen mask on yourself first. There's a difference between like, you know, oh my God, I love myself so much, the vanity and the external love. I'm talking about that inner peace, that in, that inward soul love, right deep within can you look into a mirror and say, gosh, you know, Jenny, I, I love you. I love you. I love who you are, the character, the personality, how you show up in the world, how you serve people. Are you able to do that? And do you align that love? Because that love helps you look after yourself. The lifestyle that you choose is aligned to, and it's usually in line with the love that you have for yourself. The leisure you choose for yourself is aligned with the love you have for yourself. And then you look on the other side and you look at prosperity, purpose and passion. What are you passionate about? What drives you? What makes you jump out of bed in the morning and say, like, I've got to get going? What drives you? Because love is still at the root of that. What is your purpose? Are you living in line with your purpose? What are your core values? What are your negotiables and what are your non-negotiables? Because love is at the is at the center of that. Love of self that means you won't compromise on certain things. And other things you may compromise to a point. And then what's your prosperity? What what for you, prosperity? How do you measure prosperity? What is prosperity? Is it just in material things or financial things? That's how you kind of get to to understand your life better. And that is one of my coaching courses I've had for a long, long time. It's a great, you know, how to live life better, aligning love, lifestyle and leisure with passion, prosperity and purpose. That's your LP. That's how we live. But I used to, as an old boogie girl, we used to love, I can't believe I gave, I listened to a record yesterday and thinking, why did you give an ex-boyfriend all of your LPs to look after? Now that is, you know, I, I like to think I don't regret anything in life, but if I have one regret, is that I did not value my music enough to hold on to it. The music is the food of love. I cannot believe I gave away so many of my music, so much of my music. But anyway, I digress. Look, we're running out of time. And I really would love to be able to share some of the testimonies over the next couple of weeks of the ladies that completed the 60-day challenge. 
I want to be able to share those, not just the aesthetic results, which were great, you know, losing a stone, dropping a dress size, dropping two dress sizes. That's all fantastic. But my lady with motor neuron disease, improving her speech, improving her movement ability, improving her organ function. Well, that's priceless. That is absolutely priceless. Those ladies being able to know where their focus needs to be, how they can look at exercises differently and understand the different types of exercises and what they should be doing, how they understand the importance of breath, how they understand nutrition and they can make nutritional choices. All of those things make a significant difference. And I would love to be able to share that. Excuse me. I'd love to be able to share that with you as well. So there are only 10 places available. So if you are interested, then you can send me an email, pelvicsecrets at iCloud.com. I can send you the link so you can book on to the next course. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Pelvic Secrets. You can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook, Jenny, Juliet, Echo, November, November, India, it's Jennifer minus the F-E-R, so Jenny with an I, no E on the end. Russell, you'll find me on many platforms. I've just got to get onto Facebook and get so many different groups. <laughs> get all these groups, I mean, Diva, I've spoken into. I've just got to get myself where I was before. But if you're interested, let me know. But my time is definitely far spent. So until next week, in health and happiness, stay blessed. It's a powerful year, 2023. It's full of presence, power and possibilities.